Hello everyone, my name's James and I work for the Enigma project and I'm here to show you something special today. I'm here to show you this thing over here, which is a genuine World War II Enigma machine. Now this is not a copy, it's not a replica. This was actually used during the Second World War. This was made in 1936 and it was found in France after the war. Now you don't get many of these about today, and um, there are about maybe 12, maybe 20 in museums. The ones in museums are behind glass cases, you can't really get close to them. Uh, so this is a quite a, a rare thing we're going to have a look at today. So let's take a look inside. Okay, what we see inside is something, well, to me, it looks a lot like an old-fashioned typewriter, but instead of paper, we've got a lamp board at the top. Let's see how this works. I'm going to press a letter. Let's press the letter K. If I press the letter K, there we go, the letter W lights up, and that's your code. But the clever thing about Enigma is, if I press K again, a different letter lights up, in this case, the letter M. Why is that? Let's have a look at what's going on inside. Okay, inside we've got these three things at the top. These are called rotors. Now inside the rotors, you have to imagine it's all like spaghetti. It's crisscross wiring. Now that crisscross wiring scrambles up the alphabet. It scrambles up the alphabet and it makes a code. But watch what happens when I press a letter. When I press a letter, the rotors move. Now it's this moving part that changes the code. Like I said, Inside the rotor, it's crisscross wires. So the wires are moving inside the machine, which means it scrambles up the alphabet in a different way each time you press a letter. Now in the morning, they would have to set up this Enigma machine. Let me show you how they did that. First thing they would have to do is set up this thing at the front. It's called the plug board. And what we've got here are 10 wires and it connects 20 letters of the alphabet into 10 pairs. And two letters in a pair get swapped over. That's the first level of scrambling. Like I said before, inside these rotors, it's all crisscross wires. So the message gets scrambled again and again and again. It comes back and it lights up one of these bulbs. Now, these rotors come out, they swap about, in fact they had five rotors to choose from, so they would pick three from a box of five. They would put them in the machine in any order, each rotor has 26 starting positions, and there is also something called a kickover point, which means that when this rotor on the right hand side has done a full revolution and gone all the way around, it kicks the middle rotor. And the same when the middle rotor has gone all the way around, it kicks the left hand rotor one place. Now this is no good if we can't decode a message, so let's see how they did that. I'm going to send something simple. I'm just going to say OK. So I'm OK. If I send the message OK, let's see what happens. First of all, O becomes an M and K becomes L. Okay, now we're going to reset this machine back to where it started. This rotor has moved, it's moved two places. I'm going to move it backwards, one, two places. Now the machine is reset back to where it started. Now if I type in the code ML, let's see, M becomes O and L becomes K. Okay, you get the message back again. This is a code and decode machine. It's brilliant. It's just very clever engineering. And that's all for me for now. So if you have been, thanks for watching.